All right, welcome back to another episode of me rambling about something. And today I want to talk to you about Dynasty Warriors games. Musou games. Now, I guess just to get it out of the way, Musou comes from the Japanese name of Dynasty Warriors. Shin Sengoku Musou. Musou at the end means, I think it means warrior. So Dynasty Warrior Musou. Now, there's like the Dynasty Warrior mainline games, like 2, 3, 4... All through there, up to nine is the latest. But then there's like a ton of spin-offs that use the Dynasty Warriors formula. I'll talk a little bit on what makes that formula in a second, but there's like Samurai Warriors as a spin-off. Uh Warriors Orochi. That's like a a crossover of Dynasty Warriors and Samurai Warriors, and they're all in the same game. And then I'm sure you're if you're listening, I'm sure you're familiar with the uh there's like Hyrule Warriors, which was, they fit Legend of Zelda into the Dynasty Warriors formula. Uh, what else did they have? Persona 5, I'll talk more about the spinoffs later. But I guess to establish what that formula is. So if you know anything about Dynasty Warriors and what it plays like, I'm sure it's the combat. You know, there's very short attack strings. Combat is very simple. So... I'm thinking about this. I've been playing recently with a PS4 controller, or PS5 controller, rather. But you press square to attack, to do light attacks. And then any time in that, you can, you can do, there's like a chain. Like you press one light attack, and then all the way up to six. Six-ish, and that's a chain. And any time in that chain, you can press triangle. And that'll do a heavy attack, and that'll end the combo, and the chain, rather. So there's like, you can press square triangle, square square triangle, square 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 triangle, and you know, so on and so forth. It's not like Bayonetta where you have to memorize all these crazy combo, like, inputs. Is Bayonetta, I don't, I haven't played Bayonetta, I don't know if it has inputs like that. Um, it's not like, I guess Devil May Cry is something I've played recently. It's not like that where there's all kinds of like, you hold back and then press attack or you... Oh my gosh, it's been a while since I played it, I guess, but... You know, there's basically all you have is, like, square for your light attacks, and then you have the triangle to, like, end the combo. And that's it. There's not a lot of depth to the combat. There's depth outside of the systems, but for the combat, it's it's very simple. It's very, very satisfying. There's just something about the animations... The, uh, oh, I had, I, this should, this should have been the first thing I talked about. How many enemies there are. That's, that's like the main thing people know Dynasty Warriors for is how many enemies you, you fight in battle. I'm trying to think like, uh, Devil May Cry, you're fighting like maybe six enemies at a time, eight enemies in like bigger rooms. I'm thinking of the first game. I haven't played, uh, five, so I don't know what that turns into, but. You know, games back when, like, uh, Dynasty Warriors 2, that, that like, really cemented the formula of modern uh, Dynasty Warriors. You're fighting, like, 40 people, 50 people, and you're just hacking and slashing your way through them. You know, compare that to Devil May Cry or whatever, where there was, like, six guys. The scale is a lot bigger. And these guys are weak. You know, it might take... In the earlier games, it took more hits to kill, like, the peons. I forget what you call them. I don't know if they have names, but like the very, very, f like the fodder enemies, those take like one or two hits. Maybe in the earlier games, they took three, four, five, maybe. Those enemies are just fodder to be slashed through as you get your make your way through to the uh, officers or captains. Just slashing your way through those, through those peons, that fodder, it's satisfying. You know, they get, you have these flashy attacks and... The sound effects are on point, you're just slashing them, and they're flying every which way, and you do some big AoE attack, and they all go, and they explode everywhere. It's it's so satisfying. And then on top of that, like, very simple gameplay layer, there's, like, there's usually, probably most Dynasty Warriors games have, like, in-depth stat management and equipment slots, so you'll you'll get, like, weapons in battle... Maybe armor sometimes. I don't know. I don't think there's armor in Dynasty. Maybe it's just like weapons for the most part. 
you get weapons and those will have like certain like attributes on them so you gotta you know maybe grind a bit if you want to find the perfect weapon for you but you don't really gotta grind unless you're doing like super late game stuff and then there's stat management where maybe you gotta find the right attribute on the weapon to complement like the right stats for that character that particular character you're playing I like I like things like that in games. There's like there's the simple gameplay layer and then you can go really in depth if you want to. But for me a lot of the time I just like doing the simple combat, hacking and slashing through, killing a thousand bad guys in a 20 minute stage. That's that's good fun. So I guess I'll narrow down and talk about like a specific game. So I've been playing Dynasty Warriors 8 Extreme Legends recently on uh, Steam. It's an older game. It came out in 2013, I think. And then the Extreme Legends expansion came out in 2014. Dynasty Warriors 9 came after that, and that's that wasn't too well received. But Dynasty Warriors 8, it seems like the last greatest Dynasty Warriors game. And that's what I've been playing recently. So I'll talk about what you can do in that game. There's a ton of stuff to complete. If you listen to my video about balloons, that was a video ago, or the video before last, you know I'm a fiend for, like, completion, and, you know, just completing as many things as I can. When I see a game has, like, a bunch of achievements and a bunch of stuff to unlock, that really draws me to it. I like something I can get sucked into for a long period of time. And Dynasty Warriors is, like, a lot like balloons. It's one of those games that just feel, I'm drawn to it. It's like, it was made for people with brains like me, who just want to see numbers go up, who want to see 100% completion on their achievement list or on some menu. So, what modes are there in Dynasty Warriors 8 and Extreme Legends? So, if you're going for 100% completion, you have to do, among other things, there's the main story playthrough. So, each... I guess I didn't lay this out i should have said this earlier but dynasty warriors it takes place in oh boy chinese ancient history it's kind of a uh there was a novel written a while a long time ago three or no it was the romance of the three kingdoms and it was kind of i'm i haven't read it i hope i'm remembering this right i'm pretty sure it was like a kind of like a heightened reality of what actually happened in some time period way back in the I think it was maybe like if I'm thinking in the years in the game I think it was like 200 AD is when this was happening maybe BC I don't know so I'm pretty sure like the historic the characters that exist in this game actually existed in history but the novel the romance of the three kingdoms kind of like it's a heightened reality so there's like I guess I don't know if there's magic or anything like that there's magic stuff in the game but the characters are like larger than life in the novel and they were kind of pumped up a bit to make it more interesting as a book you know like a fantasy thing so we get back to the main story so there's four kingdom stories you can play through so each kingdom has like a different place on the map and you're playing through one of those stories and you know they're waging war against all the others and You'll play a battle, and it'll be against another kingdom. And then if you go to the other kingdom's story, and you eventually get to that mission in the timeline, then you'll be playing from the other side of that battle. So there's the four kingdom stories. And then there's... There's like a... There's cutscenes, there's story, you're seeing these characters develop as it's... Like, it seems... For the most of the battles, there's like a, a year or so between each battle. Maybe it's a couple months, maybe it's a couple years... There's a long lot, lot of time in between each battle. And there's roughly 17 missions per kingdom. So there's four kingdoms and then 17 missions per kingdom. And then there's one standalone like a uh, path alongside those kingdoms. It follows one particular character. Has a little less missions. But he's like this ultra powerful warrior, Lubu. He's, he's this big bad guy, and he, he's kind of like a, a freelancer. He's doing all kinds of random stuff. But you get to see you get to see his uh, 
story in the in that separate path. And I guess I should talk about what you do in those missions. In those missions, you're you're going through these missions, and there's like characters will say, "Oh, we gotta take this, you gotta kill this guy," and you try to make your way through. Maybe there'll be a development where they retreat to a certain retreat back, so you gotta follow them and kill some more like weakling bad guys. The main missions themselves are just very simple. There's not a lot of objectives. Uh, I'm trying to think. There's not very many objectives at all. Occasionally it's like kill this like enemy turret or something. But for the most part it's just, you know, fight your way through the enemy army to kill the main captain bad guy. And in those missions there's sometimes side objectives where you can unlock newer missions. So it'll be like... There will be a moment in the story where it's like, quick, we got to go save this. We got to go save our friend. And that's an optional thing. You know, they'll be like, oh, we got to go. We got to go. But if you don't make it in time, you know, they'll retreat or die. But the mission will keep going. But if you were to go back and retry the mission and actually do save them, maybe the mission will play out in a different way or it'll unlock a completely new mission. And the path kind of like branches apart there. So you'll have like two separate, I'm pretty sure each kingdom has like a historical path and then a, uh, what, are they, what do they call it? Like a what if path. It's like a hypothetical path. I haven't played through all the kingdoms. I'm, all, I'm mostly through uh, Wei. And there's a point where your main commander, he loses a battle. And on the menu, I can see it like splits, splits apart. So the path I'm on right now is where he failed. But I'm guessing... The second path is where if I had succeeded, that's kind of a fun like story thing. I'm going to, I'm trying to play through all the historical stuff. And then, you know, once I get the baseline for what that's like, I'll go back and appreciate the hypothetical stories just to see what could have been. And then there's even more side objectives when you play those main story stages in free mode. Free mode is like a, it's a mode where you get to play stages without the restrictions of story mode. So when you get to a mission in story mode, it'll be there will be three characters that are like taking place that are there in the moment in the story, and you can pick between those three. But in free mode, you can pick from all like ninety characters, I think there is. So there's even more super secret side objectives there. It's like a uh, defeat two hundred people in less than a couple minutes, uh, get here without losing so much health, you know that kind of thing. So there's even more side objectives. And then on top of that, there's even more super, super extra missions <laughs> alongside the main paths added. And these are from the expansion. So there's the main path in the story for each kingdom. And then there's side missions below it that are that were added in the Extreme Legends expansion. I don't know what those are. I haven't dived into them yet, but I'm sure they're just little like one-off things that don't really tie into their own path. So there's all that for the story. There's a bunch of missions and side objectives side objectives for story mode and then the other big mode of dynasty warriors 8 is ambition mode ambition mode is i haven't gone into this too much i, I just started playing it last night or the night before but it's kind of like a a kingdom builder maybe that's a little too it's a bit too ambitious of a way to describe it you play shorter stages to gather allies and materials to build up your army and eventually impress an emperor that you're trying to, like, court so you can uh, take over of China at the time. But the gameplay is mostly just you doing short stages that are, like, five minutes max. Most stages in story mode are, like, 20 minutes-ish, 25. But stages in Ambition are, like, five minutes and you chain a bunch of them together. You can do like a, a chain to get more materials. There's a lot of like management and systems in this mode. So there's like you got to level up facilities. You got to manage the bonds between your allies. Um, What else is there? I haven't gotten into it too much. So I don't know a whole lot. But what little bit I've played, there's a lot to get into. It seems like I'm going to have to play a lot of battles. Looking forward to... Probably go back and forth between this and the main story mode as I play through it more. Challenge mode. Challenge mode's like a short little thing. There's like six modes inside the challenge mode, and 
these modes are like super simple. It's like kill a bunch of bad guys as quickly as you can. Uh, see how many you can kill in five minutes or some ten minutes. Uh, knock a bunch of bad guys off a bridge. Kill as many officers as you can in ten minutes or something. You know, stuff like that. It's it's like a leaderboard. There's not a lot of depth to it, but it's fun to, you know, chase a higher score. So that's all the stuff there is, but, you know, if you're going for 100% achievements, which I'm not sure if I want to do, but something that's on the table, there's a lot to do. There's... So first, you got to beat every stage on the highest difficulty. So there's 17 missions per kingdom, and there's four, I guess, and a half kingdoms. There's so many missions. And the 17 missions, that doesn't even include the uh, missions added in the expansion. I think there's like eight missions per kingdom from the expansion-ish. So that's even more. You gotta beat every, of the, every one of those in the highest difficulty. That's That would be a nightmare. That's something you can only really do late game. I don't know what the scaling is like. Like, if I, if I could do... Like, I've been playing on normal mostly. I don't know if I could play on, like, a ultimate as the highest difficulty, I think. I don't know if I could go straight to that, or it's, it's a thing that I... I guess what I'm trying to say, I don't know if the difficulty scale with your level. I don't know if I could skip ahead to ultimate and be able to compete at level 20, or if I need to be level 60 to even be able to, like survive um but i don't i don't know if i want to get into that stuff uh that's like dedication and then on top of that you know if you want to get every achievement you got to collect all the weapons in the game so if you want to collect all the weapons you know like the the super difficult ones they require you to beat a certain stage with a certain character i think on a certain difficulty the highest difficulty. So you need to... I don't know if the game clues you into who you need to do on what stage, or if it's like a... Just go to game facts and look up... Oh, I need to beat... Uh, this stage with... Lou Bay. And on Chaos or Ultimate difficulty or whatever. And I'll get his... Spear? Does he have a spear? I think he has a spear. Uh, don't know if we'll get into that either. A lot of characters, a lot of stages... So yeah, I don't know. I kind of want to do 100% completion, but I don't think I will, honestly. Like if I'm being if I'm being real, if I'm gonna keep it a buck fifty, I'm probably not gonna 100% this game. I only started playing it because I uh, I got Warriors Orochi three on sale, and I started playing it. And for for the record, I haven't played a Dynasty Warriors game before. Well, I had played a little bit of this game like a year or two ago, but I stopped playing because. Had a hard time following the game and all that, like the story. But I just put it on the shelf and said I'd get back to it. And recently I started playing Warriors Orochi 3. And I mentioned earlier that's a crossover from Dynasty Warriors and Samurai, Warrior, Samurai Warriors. And I super had no idea what was going on. There was all kinds of characters. I couldn't keep track of all of them, you know. I couldn't keep track of game characters from one game. Now there's two games, two series. Like all these, ugh, it was a mess. There's like 130 characters in that game. It's crazy. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'll spend all my time playing Dynasty Warriors 8. Maybe I'll move on to another at some point. Maybe I'll play Samurai Warriors and then play Warriors Orochi. Hard to say. Or maybe I'll stop playing them all together. But I didn't get into Dynasty Warriors through Dynasty Warriors. I got into Muso games through the spin-offs. And spin-offs it's spin-offs is where the formula shines. So there's the formula of, you know, the simple combat, then you have this like layered beneath it of like stat management, equipment. And then you have the formula of like stages linked together in a story mode. And usually there's like a side mode. Like, Dynasty Warriors have all kinds of different side modes. Like, uh, Dynasty Warrior 8. Dynasty Warrior 8. Dynasty Warriors... Oh my god, how do I say this? Dynasty Warrior 8's side mode is Ambition Mode. And there were others before it. And there will be others after it. But, you know, each uh, game has its own little side mode. And that's where they get to... Omega Force, the developer, gets to flex their, you know, like, creative muscles and 
you know, make make the spinoff work for that particular IP. So what spinoffs has what spinoffs have there been for Dynasty Warriors? There's been a Legend of Zelda Dynasty Warriors game, Fire Emblem, Persona, One Piece, Dragon Quest, Berserk. There's just so many. There's Gundam. There are so many. It just blows my mind how many there are. Like, there's two Legend of Zelda games, two Fire Emblem ones, one Persona. I think there's like four One Piece, uh, two Dragon Quests, one Berserk. And I think there's like maybe three Gundam Dynasty Warriors games. Oh, there's a couple Fist of the North Star ones, I think. Yeah, they are just all over the place when it comes to... Oh my gosh, I just I, I just thought of something. I gotta write this down for later. I do not want to forget to bring this up. Okay. I will not forget. Okay. Where was I? Um, Omega Force. I don't know how they do this. This is like all they do. I don't know if it's all they do, actually. Koei, Tec Koei Tecmo publishes them, but is this all Omega Force works on? I am i can't say either way. I don't know. But it has to be all they work on. They put out so many spinoffs of like different series. It's nuts. And my first experience into Musou games as a whole was with Hyrule Warriors. Now, I like Zelda. I like Zelda games. I'm not a huge fan. I'm not like ride or die Zelda. Like if you ask me what my favorite Zelda game is, I don't have one. I'm trying to. Th I was trying to think of one for a second, but I can't think of any. I don't have a lot of strong opinions of Zelda. I like some of the characters are cool. The characters are cool. Uh, I like the setting. I like the stories going on. But there's other Nintendo franchises I'm bigger a bigger fan of. You know, Metroid. I'm a ride or die Metroid fan. But Hyrule Warriors, that game will make you a Zelda fan. It's it's that game is amazing. I'm talking about the first Hyrule Warriors. Not necessarily Age of Calamity, the sequel that focused on Breath of the Wild stuff. That's kind of its own thing. But Hyrule Warriors. Hyrule Warriors is about a spin-off. It's like a what's the word? It unites characters from the different games into one story, into one game. So there's like all these characters from all different games. You know, Ocarina of Time, there's Darunia, the Goron, Princess Ruto, the Zora from that game. And then you have Twilight Princess, you know, there's Zant, Midna, um, Wind Waker, there's Toon Zelda. Uh, what was, what was the Sheik of that game? I can't remember for the life of me the pirate lady that was the alt alternate uh, spoilers, al alter ego for Zelda. I can't remember her name. The little pirate girl. She was in there. There's just all, it pulls from all these different like corners of the franchise and it puts them into one game. And they're like all interacting in the story. They're talking to each other. You know, Zant. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't remember any specific story beats, but you know, characters you might not expect to talk to each other. They, they exchange words in battle and in cutscenes. And that's that's it's pure fan service. Um, and then there's even more playable characters that don't really that are kinda like small characters you might not expect to like be part of like a Zelda All-Stars roster. Like Volga. Volga's like kind of an original character in this game. He might have showed up in other games, but I remember him most from Ocarina of Time, where he's like a dragon, and in this he's like a guy, kind of like Lu Bu. He's just some dude walking around with a spear. Uh, what else is there? The King of Red Lions from Wind Waker. You play as like the king, but he transforms into the boat and does boat attacks. And then of course there's Tingle. You can't have a you can't have a Zelda game without a Tingle. Uh, and then each of those characters has costumes that reference other characters that couldn't be in the game. I remember watching YouTube videos when uh, when it came out on the Wii U and when it eventually came back out on the Switch. You know, people put out videos of like, okay, here's every costume for every character. 
And I swear, like, every single one was a reference to something. To some character they couldn't put in the game, or to some whatever. You know, it's just references galore. So I talked earlier about, like, each Musou game will have, like, a main, sp or it'll have a main, uh, mode. Like, separate from the story mode. Like, uh, Dynasty Warriors 8 had ambition mode. And Hyrule Warriors has adventure maps. Adventure maps, and I'm gonna try to show a picture here. I will show a picture. It's, it's like a map. So the first one you get when you play the game is like a, it's the original Legend of Zelda map from the NES. It's like one of those posters you get in like a game guide or something. It's like the tiles of the map. And each tile, you can see how there's like a, it's arranged into a grid. And each square of this grid is a battle. And each battle have like a certain restriction or you can only use a certain character, or whatever. And each battle you beat gives you a unique reward. I don't remember if each battle you beat. Most of them gave you unique rewards, I'll say that at least. There's, you know, you beat one and you'll get a new weapon or a costume. Or even some of them will have characters. You know, that's how you unlock some of the, uh, some char most characters you get through story mode, but some will be locked into some specific tile on the adventure on an adventure map. And there's ten. There's ten of these adventure maps in the game. Maybe I've already scrolled through at this point, but there's so many maps, and each each map has all these squares that are individual battles. And to get all the rewards, you have to S rank them. So there's so many battles to just perfect and oh my god this is this game is a in true dynasty warriors fashion this game is a completionist nightmare you know i put 96 hours into the game well i put 96 hours onto the switch version i played this in the wii u before and i put i'm not even going to try to guess how many hours i put in that but i put in a lot of hours on that as well and i restarted whenever it came to switch Hyrule Warriors a game, is a game that I just... It's a game to zone out in. It's just mindless fun. You know, a lot of people talk about podcast games or games they can listen while watching YouTube videos or something on the TV. That's what Hyrule Warriors was for me. You know, I could undock my Switch, just put it in my lap and put on a... Maybe not watch a movie, but pay half attention to both things because, you know, Hyrule Warriors and a lot of those maps, you don't got to pay too much attention. It's just... Y, Y, X, Y, 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 X. And you just go through and it's fun. The, the core gameplay loop is satisfying and the wrapping around it is what makes it special. Hydro Warriors is a celebration of the series. You know, you, it might have sounded a little cynical earlier, like, they, oh, they got all these characters and there's references and there's fan service. And it is fan service-y, don't get me wrong. But... It's a fun fan service. It makes me wish that more games had Musou spinoffs. It's, you know, like I said, it's a celebration of a series. You know, I play High Warriors and it's like, it makes me glad that Zelda exists as a series. You know, I get to see all these characters that I, you know, I grew up with. Darunia, Ruto, Zelda... All these characters from games so many years ago and they're lovingly rendered in actual high definition models it's it's great to see all the and there's marin character from oh god what game was it link's awakening is that the game she was in i think this might be the only other game she's in she was in this game on the game boy and she's like this pixelated thing and now she's this 3D model fighting alongside all these characters doing crazy attacks. And they have to it's it's satisfying. It's so much fun. That that's what that's what I get from Dynasty Warrior spin-offs. They're just fun. They're not trying to be anything more than that. They're not trying to be high art. It's just trying to make you appreciate a series you like. So that's all well and good for the spin-offs, but what about actual Dynasty Warriors? What about like a... What about the mainline games? What do I think about those? Well, I kind of talked about earlier how I, I tried playing Dynasty Warriors 8 a while back. 
maybe a year or two ago. You know, I play and I can see it has the stuff I love from Hyrule Warriors. It's got the simple combat. It's got, you know, weapon management. It's got characters. It's got stages. It's got content. It has all that stuff. But the wrapping around it is so much different. I'm not a huge history buff. So I've never... That's never been something I'm really interested in. It's cool and all, but I won't... There's there's not much else to say about it. I'm just not a big history buff. I don't I don't like historical movies or historical games. You know, even like a Call of Duty, when that was in like its World War II phase, I don't really care about those. I like modern combat games. And you know, Dynasty Warriors, that's like ancient history. I'm I'm not into that stuff. But, you know, I want to have an appreciate I want to see what makes I want to see what the core of Dynasty Warriors is. So I started playing Dynasty Warriors 8 again recently. And I've, like I've said, I made it almost all the way through One Kingdom by now. And I guess here are some of my thoughts. The story is kind of hard to follow. Now, I, as you might expect, I speak English. I do not speak Chinese or Japanese. Um... Dynasty Warriors is takes place in China, but it's a Japanese developed game, so the the voices are in Japanese. Uh, there is a dub, but I don't use that for reasons I don't want to get into. It's a Chinese game set in or developed by Japanese people, and there's a lot of, as I understand it, there's a lot of crossover with uh, Japanese and Chinese when it comes to language and like how words are pronounced but when it comes to these Chinese names it's very hard to remember a lot of them you know maybe maybe I'm just maybe I'm thinking about it the wrong way maybe it's not that they're Chinese maybe it's just that there's so many characters you know I feel like each stage throws four new characters at you and you don't get a lot of time to stick with these people um but I mean pronunciation is definitely a problem you know, there's... It's, oh, God. How do I say it? It's the main guy of, like, what seems like to be the main kingdom. Tzotzo? If there's any... If there's any people that speak Chinese that listen to this, I'm sorry. Tzotzo? I'm pretty sure that's how I've heard it said in the dub. But that's simple. Tzotzo. But it's spelled like C-A-O, C-A-O. C-A-O space, C-A-O. Tzotzo. And you see, I'm like, what? How do I, how do I get that from that? And maybe if I were playing the English version, it'd be a lot easier, but I guess I could talk about it. So I said I played a Warriors Orochi 3 before playing DW8 recently. And Warriors Orochi 3 does not have an English dub. So when I started playing Dynasty Warriors 8, I kind of wanted to get a little bit of Dynasty Warriors and then a little bit of Samurai Warriors, and then maybe I'll go back. And be able to understand, like, okay, these are Dynasty Warriors characters, these are Samurai Warrior characters, and I'll understand where they're both coming from. But knowing Warriors Orochi 3 doesn't have an English dub, it makes me... I don't want to get used to an English dub in Dynasty Warriors 8. And in uh, Samurai Warriors... I forget what game they're on, but... I don't want to get used to them and then play Warriors Orochi 3 and then not have it. So I figured I'd just stick through with the Japanese voices and push through that. It's hard because, you know, in battles, you know, you're fighting and then there's subtitles at the bottom for characters talking. And it's hard to pay attention to those and pay attention to the battle. But it's something I try to do, something I'm hopefully getting better at. Uh, where was I? I kind of took a tangent there. Uh, all of the story. So there's the characters, like it's hard to keep track of all these characters then on top of that, there's a lot of moving parts. Like there's, with, with all these characters, they play so many different roles and they're all interacting with each other and there's four kingdoms and they're all beefing with each other and all these, it's not the kingdoms are beefing with each other. All these different people are beefing with each other and you got to remember all these relationships. It's a nightmare. There is like an encyclopedia in the game that's like, okay, I'll go to the Tzotzo page. And I can see, okay, this is what he did. 
This is a short summary of him. This is when he lived, this is when he died. And there's like little links to other people's pages uh, that are related to him. So that's cool, but I mean, you can't access that in the middle of a battle. I guess another reason I'm not a huge fan of like Dynasty Warriors, like core Dynasty Warriors games, is I don't find the characters as interesting. I liked Hyrule Warriors because the characters are... I'm a Zelda fan. I know who Link is. I know who Tingle is. I know who Skull Kid is. When I, when I come to the game, I'm like, okay, I want to play as Skull Kid. Because I like him as a character. I like... Or who, was I, who did I play back in the day? I'm trying to think of who I played most. I think I played a lot of Ganondorf and Young Link. Yeah, I just come to those like, okay, I like Ganondorf as like a... He probably has a fun moveset. Let me check him out. Oh, he does have a fun moveset. And then I get invested in him as a character. But at least in Dynasty Warriors 8, I don't I don't really have that pull to any one character. It's mostly just like, do they look cool? Do they have a cool outfit? That's it. Um, movesets, at least in Dynasty Warriors 8. I know this isn't true for other games in the series, but movesets are locked to weapons, not characters. So you, you can technically give any character a spear, and then they'll do the spear moveset. So one, the only difference is that like, uh, let me think of an example. Zotso, he has a, his weapon is a commander sword, I think it's called. So any character can equip that commander sword and they'll do the same attacks as Zotso when he has it equipped. But he, if he has that sword equipped, he'll get like a special heavy attack. So I told you earlier that uh, you can press square, square, triangle and pressing triangle ends the combo. For uh, him, if you press, I don't know exactly, but each character will have two special attacks. So you can press square, square, triangle, triangle, and do a special attack. So each character specializes in one weapon. Maybe this is just the Dynasty Warriors 8 problem, but I don't really like that. I like having, like, Ganondorf plays this way with this weapon. You know, you give him the spear and he's going to do the same attacks. And other, like, Link can't do the same attacks as Ganondorf. I kind of like that. It makes characters more distinguished and, like, more defined. Yeah, because I think I would get more attached to the character if they had their own moveset. Are other games... I'm trying to think if Warriors Orochi 3 was like that, if it had defined weapons or if any character could equip any weapon. I know there's, like, weapon leveling up, but I can't... I honestly can't remember if you... If, Every character can equip every weapon. Hmm. I don't think they can, but I'm not 100% sure. I guess another... This isn't really a problem, it's just kind of like a statement, but... The last good Dynasty Warriors game came out in 2014. There's been a lot of spin-offs since that Dynasty Warriors 8 Extreme Legends came out. Hyrule Warriors came out in that time. Persona 5 Strikers came out. Uh, what else? Age of... The, a second Hyrule Warriors came out? Um, I, guess, I guess Dynasty Warriors 9 did come out. I, I'll, I have a section for that in a minute. There's just, like, quality of life stuff. That's something I... I so, it's so missable. It was little things, like not being able to compare weapons in the right way you want to. Or slight menu annoyances. That stuff, it might seem small, but it, ma it makes a world of a difference. All right, so next section is talk about the future of Dynasty Warriors. So what is the future of Dynasty Warriors as a series? I'm not too attached to mainline Dynasty Warriors games. Like as I've said, I don't I don't care too much for the story or the characters, but I hope they pulled it around. You know, I kind of talked about it and alluded it alluded to it, but Dynasty Warriors 9 was not received well. It was open world, which kind of had some, like, which kind of put some heat on it, but I think most of the heat came from the game was just bad. I think Dynasty Warriors could be done in an open world. Like, I don't think DW9 doing as poorly as it did is proof that Dynasty Warriors can't function with an open world. It just needs to be done well. You know, the series has been known for these constrained maps where it's you're in a... You're in a battlefield, an admittedly big battlefield, 
but it's still con like contained. I'm pretty sure Battlegrounds and Dynasty Warriors 9, there weren't any of those contained stages. It was all in this open world, and people didn't like that. Again, I haven't played Dynasty Warriors 9. I don't, I don't, I, I don't know what suggestions I would have for them to fix for a hypothetical Dynasty Warriors 10. I think they learned their lesson. Uh, each mainline game, each mainline Dynasty Warriors has a spinoff, Dynasty Warriors Empires. And that's about, that's, that really leans into like, uh, simulation and taking over China. You like manage... I don't know. I haven't played it. You manage like a uh, people and you send them out to do stuff and you manage a kingdom. Haven't played it. Don't know what it's about. But Dynasty Warriors Dying Empires, I heard it improved a little bit. There were more contained stages. I think. I don't know. I don't, I don't know about Empire, but I've heard they improved some stuff on in uh, Dynasty Warriors Nine Empires. So I think they're on the right path. Lord, I hope they pull off Dynasty Warriors 10 and make it more true to form. Because Dynasty Warriors 8, that's a PS3 game. We went all all the way through the PS4 generation without a good Dynasty Warriors like core game. Dynasty Warriors 8 got ported to a bunch of stuff, but DW9 was a letdown for a lot of people. And I hope they pull it around for Dynasty Warriors 10 whenever they get around to it. I don't think they've announced anything, but fingers crossed they pull that off. Uh, is there anything else I want to talk about real quick? Oh, I wanted to talk about the spinoffs. I forgot to write this down, but for the spinoffs, I think it's interesting that they've kind of been doing like these Musou spinoffs as like sequels to the main game. Age of Calamity is like canon to Breath of the Wild, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Age of Calamity, the second Hyrule Warriors game, takes place before Breath of the Wild. And they had Nintendo work with them for the story. Uh, what else is there? Fire Emblem Warriors? There was the first Fire Emblem Warriors, which is a lot like Hyrule Warriors, and then it's like a all-stars, you know, get everyone together from all the games. And then I think their latest spinoff was Fire Emblem Warriors Three Houses. I don't know what it, the name was. was. But it was specifically about Fire Emblem Three Houses. And I don't know if that's canon, but they they leaned into the story as I understand it. And then there's Persona 5 Strikers. That's another game. I'm pretty sure that's considered canon. Oof. I don't know if it's canon. I think it might be. But that game really leans into the story as I understand it. And it's it's in a... Persona 5 format where it's like a virtual or visual novel. So that's a that's a weird direction they're going in. Where like, you know, they had all these games that are, you know, basically just like spin-offs or it's like what if scenarios, and now they're like slowly transitioning into telling canon stories to these IPs. That's interesting. I guess that leads into my last point. What Musou spinoff would I like? So I have three categories here. Nintendo series, a non-Nintendo series, and my dream of what I hope they make. So I split it up that way because Nintendo series, it seems like they've been working with Nintendo a lot. You know, with uh, Hyrule Warrior, two Hyrule Warriors games, two Fire Emblem Warriors games. So maybe they'll make another down the line. First off the bat, I mean, of course I would love if they made a Nintendo All-Stars Warriors game. That would be amazing. You know, there's Mario, there's Kirby, there's Yoshi. You know, let me fight as Yoshi. That's a bizarre statement to say, but... I guess saying that out loud, you know... How could they get their, like, weapon system into this? Like, would you give Yoshi... Would his weapon be his saddle? That's like his equipment? I don't know. I think that's... That's, that's more of a pipe dream, you know, I'd love to play as Samus and fighting against, I don't know, bad uh, Koopa the Quick. <laughs> Koopa the Quick as a boss. I'd love to see Samus fight Koopa the Quick. <laughs> but that's, you know, that stuff's a pipe dream. I guess my uh, slightly more realistic hope would be, it's kind of out of left field, 
But I would love to see a Warriors Muso spinoff featuring Captain Falcon and F Zero stuff. The F Zero series is so, it has so much potential. And when I was trying to think, like, okay, what Nintendo series would best fit be fit for a Muso spinoff? And the first thing that came to my mind is Metroid. I'm a big Metroid fan. But I don't think there's enough characters to, like, make that satisfying. There's, like, they had, there was, like, different, uh, what do they call them, bounty hunters in the later Prime games. But I don't think people really care about, like, the only character people really care about is Samus. And, you know, Ridley. I guess Ridley would have to be playable. If Ganondorf is playable in the Zelda game, Ridley's playable in this. But I don't think that would happen. I think Captain Falcon, like as the star of a new Muso, oh, that would be so cool. There's so many racers. There's, you know, uh, Captain Falcon, of course, there's Black Shadow. What was the Samurai guy's name? He was an assist trophy in Smash. He was in the opening for Melee. Can't remember his name. Uh, there's that guy that dresses like Fox McCloud's dad. There's, uh, the octopus guy with weird tentacles. There's so many weird characters. Yeah, it'd be weird putting him in a Musou game. But I think it has potential. Nintendo, if you want to take that idea, feel free to. You don't even gotta credit me. Alright, so, uh, non-Nintendo. Uh, my two picks here are, coincidentally, both anime... Because I think, I, mean, I think anime just has, like, a better potential for something like this. You know, they have wacky characters and cool settings and premises and all that. My Hero Academia, that's something I read recently, and that's got a ton of wacky characters. And that's a lot, that's really well fitting for, like, a, I think that fits perfectly for a game like this. Like, you got grunts, you got these, like, quirks that make for good characters. You know, you got the, uh. Weapons could be like there are certain parts of their suit that you upgrade. That would be great. There's, I would love to play that. And of course, Dragon Ball. That's that. I kind of thought of that the last second. There's a lot of Dragon Ball games. I don't. I'm used to thinking of Dragon Ball in terms of like Xenoverse 2 combat. I don't know how well a Muso would turn out for it. It would probably be fine. But they'd have to do something to distinguish it from everyone punches. You know, there were some characters, someone had a sword. What was it? The Supreme Kai had a sword, I think. Uh, Goku could have his staff. I don't know. The more I think about that, there's not a lot of, like, weapon variety. So maybe not a lot of variety in movesets. I don't know. Okay. We'll close out this video talking about my dream Musou games. So I guess this is the one I thought of earlier that I had to write down to remember. Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. I think this, this would be the perfect anime Musou game. They've done a few. They've done a One Piece and Berserk. But Jojo's, there's, you have the character variety in terms of, you know, all these unique characters. And you have their stands as like, for their weapons. You know, the problem with the Dragon Ball where it's like everybody's punching. You know, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, each stand has like their own unique trait and their own way of fighting and you know Dio would freeze time Jotaro he'd be the punchy guy oh goodness I'm having a hard time remembering Jojo characters well if you've played you know that you would know that this would be a great Muso game a lot of variety in weapons and all that play styles okay my final this is my super ultra I really hope they make this one day Final Fantasy. I would kill for a Final Fantasy Musou game. I'm a big Final Fantasy. They already made Dragon Quest. They already made Dragon Quest. They are so close to doing a Final Fantasy Musou game. You know, you could pull from all these different stories and characters, do a do one big story where it's all crossing over. They already kind of did that with uh, Dissidia. Koei Tecmo. They've shown they really have the the talent to pull this off. They have the talent to put all these characters from all these different 
games with the different tones and make it work together. In Final Fantasy, you know, you got Cloud, you got Squall, you got uh, Final Fantasy IX characters. I haven't played that. Um, Terra from Six, Kane from Four. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm getting sad thinking about this now because I know it's not going to happen. But I, oh man, I'm just making myself more upset the more I think about it. It'd be so cool. It'd be so cool. Oh my god, if they had like something like adventure maps, whatever side mode they'd add, like the ambition mode or the adventure maps and Hy Hyrule Warriors. Oh my god, I would play that forever. Okay, um, I guess that's all for this. As always, leave a comment if you got any suggestions for a future video. Maybe I'll get around to it sometime. This, this looks like it's going to be my longest rambling about, but... I've been playing Dynasty Warriors recently, and I'm really passionate about it. Hopefully some of that passion came through. Maybe I just got... I'm, I'm definitely working through this. I'll, I'll get better at this unscripted stuff as the episodes come out. But thanks for watching, and see you next time. See you next time? See you next...